this morning. He's not asleep today. He's with us. Amen. Isaiah 6 and 7. If you don't have your Bibles, it'll be on the screen for you here this morning. Now, we don't do this so you can get lazy and leave your Bibles home. We do this just in case you forget your Bible. It's up there, right? Isaiah 6 and 7, if you found that, say amen. It says, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. This morning, I want to preach the title of my message is Purge Me, Lord. Purge Me, Lord. Let's pray and ask for God's help. Father, I love you and I thank you so much for this opportunity and privilege that I have to to stand and declare the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know today it's alive, it's powerful today. But God, I stand and I need your help this morning. I ask God this morning for a fresh anointing of that Holy Ghost and fire. I pray, God, that you'd anoint every word that I speak, God. Anoint every ear to hear your word this morning. And God, let them receive your word with gladness. Father, I'll never fail to give you honor and the glory and the praise, God, that you deserve today. And I ask it all today in the name of Jesus. And everybody say amen with me again this morning. Now, I want to take my text out of that last part of the scripture where it talks about my sin being purged. Now, I looked up what the word purge means in the dictionary. It means to rid whatever is impure or undesirable or to cleanse or to purify. And this morning... I want to say we need to come to our place in our lives, each and every one of us, where we say, purge me, Lord. Purge me from all the things that are impure. Purge me from all the undesirable things in my life that don't please you. And Lord, just purify me today. When I used to work at State Farm, I worked in a warehouse when I first started for a few years. It was my job that we housed all the claim files for the state of Indiana in our warehouse. We had shelving that was 20 feet tall and 3 feet wide, and we had row after row after row of files. Now, why are you telling me this? I'll tell you in a minute, all right? But we had millions and millions and millions of files in our building. It was our job to take care of those files, and then when someone went to court or something, they needed a file, it was our job to get the file and send it to them, and we would send them all over the uh, state of Indiana. But anyway, I worked there in that warehouse, and once a year, there was a time in January where we purged our files, where it was a time where there was files that they called dead files. There were files that were no longer of use. The claim had been settled, And they were dead. They were just sitting on the shelves, just taking up space. They called them dead files. And and once a year, only once a year, we had the opportunity to go into our files and, and to take those dead files and destroy them. Now, we would take all the files, we would load them on a semi, and we'd take them to Indianapolis and dump them in an incinerator. But the reason why we purged our files is to get rid of the dead files to make room for the new files that would come in for the next year. There came a time where we were not allowed to do this. They called, they put a hold on this and and things begin to get tight. But amen, but once a year, more most most years than none, we were allowed to get rid of the dead stuff to be able to bring in new claim files. and, And so we would open up the shelves where the old ones were, where we could put the new ones in. But what I'm trying to say this morning, amen, just as we as employees at State Farm would take once a year, amen, to take our files, the dead files, and to purge them, pull out the ones that didn't need to be there, and destroy them, I believe each and every day as children of God that we ought to come to God and say, God, if there's anything in me that doesn't belong, if there's any dead stuff in there that shouldn't be there, Lord, purge me and get rid of those things that don't belong. Amen? Matthew 6, 24 says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God 
and mammon. How many knows we can't walk and talk out of both sides of our mouths? Either we're serving God or we're not. And I believe this morning we all got to come to a place in our lives where we make a choice and a decision that I'm going to serve God no matter what my family says, no matter what my co-workers say, no matter what people I hang around with say, I'm going to serve God and Him alone. But I believe we can't serve God like God wants us to serve Him if we still got junk in our lives. We still got dead stuff in our hearts that shouldn't be there. We need to come to a place in our lives where we say, I will serve God and I will serve Him at the best of my ability. And we need to say, God, clean me up and get rid of the junk. Lord, purge me. Purge me. Get rid of whatever is impure. Get rid of the junk in my life that doesn't belong. And we need to say, God, just purge me. Purge me. Get rid of those things that you don't like. Get rid of those things in my life that don't belong. Amen. Because if we have sin in our lives, how many knows we're not going to go to heaven? There's not one sin that God's going to say, well, you know, you go ahead and come on in. If we have sin in our hearts and our lives, we're not going to walk down those streets of gold. When we get to the pearly gates, they're not going to open. We must be pure and we must be holy before God. We must be clean on our hearts inside. We can dress up the outside, but if our hearts are impure before God, how many knows we can miss heaven? we got to all come to a place and say, I will serve God, but I want to do it with my whole heart. Too many people want to serve two masters. They want to talk out of both sides of their mouth. They want to say praise God on Sunday, and they want to F God on Monday. How many knows it won't work? You can't serve two masters. Either you love the one or hate the other. Amen, this wasn't my word. This is what the word of God says. You can't serve two masters. Either you love the one or you hate the other. Either word don't work. I've been there. I tried to hold on to the world and tried to serve God. It's not a fun place. The world don't want you and God don't want you. Because how many knows God don't want your leftovers? He wants everything in your life. He wants to be ruler. He wants to be Lord of our lives. God don't want your junk. He don't want your leftovers. He wants us to come to a place and say, God, I give it all to you. I give my life to you 100%. Take my junk and get rid of my junk. Purge me. Throw it away. The Bible says he'll take our sins and our iniquities and he'll cast them as far as the east is from the west. But we got to ask Him to purge us. we got to ask Him to cleanse us. we got to ask Him for forgiveness. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How many knows there's not one sin that God cannot forgive? There is one if we blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Amen. But if we have not blasphemed the Holy Ghost, there's not a sin that you've committed today that God cannot forgive. He said He would cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But we got to get to a place where we say enough is enough. I want to give it all to God and I want to be pure before God. I said it Wednesday night, you got to have a willing heart. you got to be willing to come to that place and say, God, I'm open before you. Because how many knows He knows it all anyway? There's nothing hid from God. God sees all and God knows all. We think we can hide behind our doors. We think we can hide things from God when God's already seen it and God already knows all about it. So why don't we just come to a place and say, God, just purge me of it. I don't need it. I don't need it. When we purge files, we made room for new files. And I believe today when God purges out the old stuff, He's going to bring in some new stuff. 
those things you got to get rid of, those things that you think are so important, you think you got to hold on to them. When you give them to God, God's going to give you something better. If you'll say, God, purge me. God, get rid of these things. God, I give them to you. You think you got to have this, and you think you got to have that, and you won't survive. Can I tell you this morning, if God says get rid of it, you don't need it. You need to get rid of it today and allow God to cleanse you and purge you and give you something better. Amen. God will not force Himself on anybody. I can't do it for my kids. They've got to want it for themselves. I can't do it for you today. You all got to come to a place where I say, I'm going to serve God, and I want to be an open book before God, and I want God, excuse me, to cleanse me from all sin and all unrighteousness today. We're only three weeks into this year. What a better time. Amen. As Sister Poole kind of talked about this morning. Amen. Doing an evaluation on our lives. Amen. Is there things in my heart that shouldn't be there? Are there things that I'm doing that I shouldn't be doing? Let's take an evaluation today. If if Jesus Christ would come to your home and sit down beside you, would you be able to watch TV with Him? Would you be able to look at the magazine you're looking at? Would you be able to do the things that you do? Or would you be embarrassed? If you're embarrassed today, can I tell you, you need to get rid of it. We need to purge ourselves from these things, but we can't do it by ourselves. We need God to purge us. We need God to cleanse us. Amen. In ourselves, we're filthiness, but in God, amen, we are righteous. If we will allow Him to purge our hearts and our lips and our minds. Amen. I believe this morning God wants to purge your mind. God wants to purge somebody's mind this morning. Amen. The devil tries to put bad thoughts in your mind. He tries to get you to look at the other sex and tries to get you to lust after them. How many knows that's not God? That's the devil. Amen. He puts thoughts in our minds. He tries to get you to look at those magazines. Amen. Where the ladies are naked or the men are naked. How many knows we need God to purge our minds that we don't have that desire anymore? Huh? We need to ask God to purge our mind of thoughts. Some people get thoughts of hurting themselves or hurting someone else. How many knows that's not God? That comes from the enemy. We need to say, God, purge my mind. I don't want to kill myself, and I don't want to kill nobody. God, purge my mind. Cleanse my mind of these thoughts. That's the devil right there. Huh? Huh? You're thinking about hurting yourself or somebody else. You need to pray, God, purge my mind. God, cleanse my mind of these things. Make me pure before you. He said if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, all bad thoughts. All those thoughts that ring in your mind. I remember when I first got saved, I had a problem cussing. And when I would go to work, those cuss words, when they begin to cuss, they begin to ring in my mind. And before I knew it, I was cussing just like everybody else. I got to a place where I had to say, God, give me a deaf ear. Help me not to hear those words. And can I tell you this morning, God delivered me. He cleansed me of my mind of those words. And when I hear those words today, I don't I want to speak those things. God has purged my mind. I believe this morning we need to ask God to purge our hearts. We need to purge our hearts from all anger, all bitterness, all strife. Amen. If you get angry to the point, amen, where you do things you normally wouldn't do and you do it out of anger, you need to ask God to purge you from anger today. How many knows the Bible says we can get angry? And Jesus got angry. But what does the Bible say? It says, get angry and sin not. If you do things out of anger that causes harm to somebody, or you do things in your heart, and you say things out of your mouth that you normally wouldn't say, anger has you, and anger is controlling you today. You need to say, God, purge me from this anger. God, get rid of this anger that's inside of me, that it doesn't control me anymore. God, you take control of this anger in my heart. And God will purge you of it today. How many has been delivered from anger? Sister Poole was talking about this morning. She's doing better, right? Huh? God can purge you from that anger. God can purge you from bitterness. Amen. You can either get bitter or you can get better. If you hold on to bitterness in your heart, you're never going to get better. You've got to let those things go. I've said it before and I'll tell you again. 
There was somebody in my ministry that hurt me bad. And I became bitter. I became bitter in my heart. I became bitter in my soul. And I had to come to a place where I said, God, purge me from this. God, it's eating me up on the inside. They were living their life. They were having fun. They were going on. But on the inside of me, I was bitter. And I was hurt. And I was upset. And they were just going on with life not even realizing what they did to me. You know what? They never came and asked me for forgiveness, and they never came and apologized. I could still li be living in a bitter state right now, but thank God I got to a place where I said, God, I just got to go on with my life. I got to forget about what they've done. I still remember today, but it doesn't grip my heart like it used to when I begin to think about it. God has purged me from that bitterness that was in my heart. How many knows we got to be pure before God? And if we got anger and bitterness in our hearts, we're not pure before God. We need to ask Him to purge us from these things. God, cleanse me from anger and bitterness and, and talking about one another. How many knows when we talk about somebody, amen, we're not uplifting God. We shouldn't be backbiting and tailbearing about one another. That comes out of our hearts, and we shouldn't have it in our hearts. You got a problem with your tongue talking about somebody? Pray and say, God, purge me from this. Cleanse me from it today. How many knows he's faithful and just? He'll do it today. But you got to want him to do it. God won't slap you up upside the head and say, quit talking about people. God won't slap you upside the head and say, quit having dirty thoughts. Huh? We got to want him to purge us. We got to want him to clean up our minds. We got to want him to clean out our hearts. We got to get rid of all the cobwebs, all the dark things in our closets. Amen. Because there's nothing hid from God. Oh, I heard people say, well, it's just a bad habit. How many knows if God's convicted you of it and God said, get rid of it? Amen. It's today we say, well, it's just a bad habit. We try to justify it, say, it's just a bad habit. If God said no, get rid of it, it's not a bad habit, it's a sin. And we need God to cleanse us from it. We need to ask God to remove us, remove it from our lives. But we try to justify and say, well, it's just my bad, just my bad self. It's just my flesh. We all got flesh, we got to fight. Amen, but my Bible says greater is he that is in me. Amen, than he that is in this world. Amen, God has given us power over our flesh if we'll crucify it. And allow our spirit man to come alive. Amen. If we're going to serve God in 2017, amen, we got to come with a clean heart. We're an open book before Him already. So why not come and say, God, purge me? God, get in there and get rid of those things that don't belong in my life. Get rid of those attitudes. Get rid of those habits or those things that are there that shouldn't be there this morning. And God, purge me. And God, cleanse me. God, purify me. And make me a vessel that you can be used of. Uh, God won't dwell in an unclean vessel. How many knows that? Be quiet this morning. God won't dwell in an unclean vessel. If we're sinning, don't expect God to dwell in your life. Huh? God won't dwell in an unclean vessel. Amen. If there's sin in our hearts, amen, we need God to cleanse us from those sins. We need to ask God to remove those sins from our hearts and lives. He said if we confess them, He's faithful and just to forgive us. But we want to quit confessing and we want to start naming them something else so it's going to be okay. It's just an alternative lifestyle. It's just this. It's just that. And then we say, oh, it's okay. How many knows if it's sin in the Bible, it's still sin today? Huh? If God said get rid of it, you need to get rid of it. I hope this morning your heart is sensitive enough that when the Holy Spirit convicts you, that you feel His conviction, that you don't push it aside and say, well, I'll deal with this later. No, when He, pr he pricks your heart, say, okay, God, here am I. As Isaiah did, he said, here am I. A man of unclean lips. And God purged him. He touched the coal from the altars and he purged his lips. Amen. God has coals from the altar today that will purge our hearts. He'll purge our minds. He'll purge our lips today. He'll make us pure. He'll make us righteous. But it's through him. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. Amen. But through him we can become righteous. If we'll say, Lord, purge me. 
Lord, get the things out that don't belong. And when we ask God to purge us, how many knows we need to keep those things from us? Huh? If you got a problem with lust, and God delivers your mind from lust, don't go home and start looking at Playboy magazines or swimsuit edition. If God's purged you, if God's convicted you of something, and you come to the altar and say, Lord, please forgive me of this, and you say, God, purge me of this, don't walk out the doors and put yourself in a situation, amen, where it invades your life one more time. Amen, don't walk out the door 